Do you need errors and emissions insurance, general liability insurance, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insureds get back on their feet. Apply for coverage now at CPLIC.net. As an independent adjuster, you're going to be dealing with restoration contractors, whether you're working cat or daily. And some of those guys and gals, well, they'll do anything to sell the job. You're watching The Property IA Show. Hey, it's Matt here with The Property IA Show on Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Now I know what you're thinking, but Matt, all roofers and contractors are angels with motives as pure as wind-driven snow. It's really those dreadful insurance companies out to cheat their customers out of their money. I know that some of my friends in the property restoration business are going to watch this video. And just let me say to you up front, I've already done a couple of videos about how poorly adjusters can sometimes treat roofers and other contractors, especially in cat situations. But understand that it's because of some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video, that a lot of adjusters will not always give you a warm reception. So just understand where we're coming from. Cool. Contractor dirty tricks. One of the biggest things that contractors and in particular storm restoration contractors and roofers do is talk trash. Long before we, the adjuster, ever show up to the house, they will fill the insured's head with all kinds of negative baloney about their insurance company. Your insurance company won't pay for the whole thing, so we'll have to help you fight them so that you can get the work done. Or your insurance company is gonna drag out the process so much that you'll just wanna drop your claim and forget the whole thing. Or most adjusters really don't know what they're talking about and we'll probably have to fight this in court. But don't worry, we've got a lot of experience doing this. Or my favorite one, be warned, your adjuster will try to overlook everything so we'll have to show him or her all the damage. Now in fairness, it's possible that there is some kernel of truth in some of those things and as a person who's owned a home, I would personally always have my contractor present when any adjuster shows up, if for nothing else to be sure that they're in agreement on the damage and the repairs. But in general, contractors who try to poison the well so that the insured is on their side are really doing more harm than good. So why create strife and division? Another contractor dirty trick is not having your back with the insured after they agree with you on the lack of damage. This is one of my favorite ones and thankfully it doesn't happen very often. It goes something like this. I jump up on the roof with the roof salesperson or the canvasser or whoever it is and we really don't find much damage and the guy agrees. Yeah, man, you know, we thought this one was borderline too, but uh, we wanted to, you to come out and take a look at it just to be sure, you know, I totally agree. There's no damage to this roof. I'm thinking, okay, cool. This is gonna be an easy one. The roofer agrees that the roof is fine and we can move on down the road. Well, we get down off the roof and as I start to explain all this to the insured, the roofer cuts me off with this little gem. Yeah, so there's definitely some serious damage to your roof and uh, your adjuster, Matt here, disagreed that you need a new roof. You know, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on that. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and take your claim to the next level and uh, get an adjuster out here who knows what they're doing. Hello, I'm right here. I'm not a violent man and my last fist fight was in high school, but man, I tell you, the last time this happened, I did fully tear this guy a new one right on the spot. Likely that was a mistake since the insured was standing right there, but apparently in some alternate universe, this is an effective sales technique. Another pretty common contractor dirty trick is intimidation. And again, this is probably the most common thing that roofers are gonna do on cat. You'll have an appointment at 10 a.m. with the insured. You're a little bit ahead of schedule and so you get there around 9.45 or so. When you pull up, there are four fully lifted diesel dually pickup trucks parked out in front and in the driveway, making you have to park halfway down the block. And there's a bunch of tan bodybuilder types wearing their little sister's t-shirts standing all around with a couple of guys up on the roof, chalking it up for good measure. One of these guys is already pushing their another satisfied customer insurance claim specialist roofing sign 
into the front yard, even though nobody's even looked at the roof yet. So you grab your stuff and you walk up and they all scowl at you with their waxed eyebrows and their square jaws. Intimidation, that's the name of the game. And the only real way to battle this is to just smile and be cool. Find out whose sale this actually is and only talk to him or her. Once they see that you're not shaking in your boots, the rest of those guys are kind of kind of fade away. They've got their truck payments to make after all, so they're not gonna hang out for the entire inspection. Another dirty trick, just, I mean, just straight up lying. And here's a couple of my favorite ones. If you make up a fake hail damage map over the customer's neighborhood and have all your sales guys run around telling insurers that they have hail damage, then you might be a cheating liar. If you tell a homeowner or an adjuster that you got that roof and that roof and that roof and that roof already approved and replaced when they actually didn't, then you might be a cheating liar. I mean, there's a good chance that this same adjuster has already looked at some or all of those roofs you just pointed out and didn't find any damage, probably with another contractor. Plus, there's no roofer alive who won't put their sign in the yard of an approved and sold job. And let's be honest, they'll put their signs in any yard they can approved or not. So as the adjuster, I just drove through that neighborhood and if I didn't see any signs in anybody's yards, I'm gonna be even more skeptical of the we got all these roofs paid for already claim. Look, I get it. Coming up with an effective sales pitch isn't easy. There's a lot of competition for you guys, but let's keep it truthful. Lying to make sales, even if it seems like a small white lie that you can't get caught in, is kind of bad business. Another one, this is the terrible one secretly recording your conversation. I was frankly shocked by this one. And if you think about how it could play out, I really don't understand how semi-intelligent beings, beings capable of projecting the consequences of their actions into the near future, could have come up with this one and put it into continuous practice with the same company. It goes a little something like this. You meet with an adjuster in a neighborhood that hasn't seen a hailstorm in 20 years, and you're super cool, right? The adjuster says no to everything that you're asking for, but then you, the roofer, say something like, hey, come on, you at least have to agree that there is some damage, right? Strangely, you, the contractor, move uncomfortably close to the adjuster with your right hip sticking out. The adjuster, hopefully, will say something like, I think I just answered that question. Why would I agree that there's hail damage when I just said I don't agree that there's hail damage? You move a little bit closer and you ask again, no, come on, man, you've gotta admit, I mean, there's at least a little bit here, right? I definitely said no. The first time this happened to me as an adjuster, I thought it was a little bit weird. I didn't know that I was being recorded, but a week or so of this goes by, and then my manager calls me and says, listen, Matt, have you heard of so-and-so restoration? And I'm like, yeah, I've been meeting those guys in the same no damage neighborhood for over a week now. Manager says, well, just a heads up, some of our insureds are getting pretty upset because after the adjuster leaves, the guy from that company pulls out a digital recorder from his pocket and plays back the adjuster agreeing that there actually is damage, even though we're saying that there isn't or that we're denying it. None of your claims have come up on this, but just be cautious around these guys. We're getting SIU involved. I was stunned when I got that call. So the next several times I ran into those guys and they pulled that with me, I just ignored them. I may have even looked at the guy's hip pocket. I'm here to tell you, if you think that your little small time roofing company that you and your buddies thought up over beers one afternoon, right after the hailstorm hit your little town, if you think you're gonna win in any way, especially in court, especially against a multi-billion dollar company, a company that likely has an entire building filled with expensive attorneys and a whole other building filled with people that they pay to look for fraud, I question your sanity. And these guys' defense, the guys that were doing this were all in their early 20s. Nothing against you, you young folks, but it's a known fact that young men and bad ideas kind of go hand in hand. And if a guy comes up with a really bad idea, an idea is so bad that everybody will know your trick after the first insured calls and says what happened, and you haven't thought that part through. I mean, incidentally, these guys also used just about every other dirty trick on this list as well. And I'll be the first to say that the vast majority of restoration contractors, yes, even the, the guys who seem like storm chasers, while they may be aggressive, they're also not crooks. Take note, independent adjuster. Aggressive does not equal 
crook. Something that everybody seems to do is fluffing up the hail hits so that the adjuster can see them better. This next one is a borderline behavior that many well-meaning roof salespeople will do, not really thinking about it for the most part. So you see, here's the thing. One of the fundamental characteristics that we look for when we're looking at hail damage on a composition shingle roof is, is there a bruise? So what's a bruise? It's an actual spot, not necessarily a black mark. And if you touch the shingle, you can tell that the shingle itself has been crushed or damaged. You may even lift the shingle and see a bump on the bottom indicating that it was hit or impacted from something falling from above. That's going to be a key identifier of hail damage, all other things being equal. So you kind of have to touch the roof to feel that. Unless it's massive, no questions hail damage, sometimes it's hard to see that bruising. And it's really, like I said, impossible without actually touching it. Where the problem comes in is that enthusiastic roofers will take their meaty thumbs and start rubbing spots on the roof that they think are hail damage, whether it's a hail hit or not. And in fairness, they may have at one time seen an adjuster do this, circle that spot, call, take a picture and call it a hit. But roofers, let me just give you a very big and very helpful piece of advice. Please do not touch the roof under any circumstances. When you rub on a shingle that way, you change that spot from an observable hail hit that an adjuster can identify to something else. It's now a spot that's been rubbed and while you think that you may be helping the adjuster see the hits better, you're walking a very fine line. Technically what you're doing is mechanical damage, okay? And that's just not covered. Ironically, many times I'll see a test square done by a roofer in the middle of a slope that has all these dark marks but nothing outside of it. I mean, do you really think that I'm just going to reuse your test square? I mean, maybe some adjusters would, but I'm not going to. The bottom line, stay out of trouble and just don't touch the roof. If there's hail damage there, a trained and experienced hail adjuster will find it and everybody can go home happy. Which brings us to actual fraud. I'll start here by saying that it's not that common to see actual real fraud, you know, stuff like hammer hail, which is why when you do see it as an adjuster, it really, really sticks out. If you're an experienced CAT adjuster who's been on the road for years looking at real hail damage, and remember, most of the claims that a CAT adjuster goes on are going to be ones with legit damage that we can pay for. And then all of a sudden, see a weird repeating pattern across the shingles. You know, all the marks are right in the middle of the shingles or none of them are anywhere near the edges of the roof. There's no soft metal damage. I mean, come on. I've seen a lot of faked storm damage, really of all kinds over the years. I'll say it again, it's pretty rare. And because it's so rare, it really, really stands out. If I go to an insurance house and I find what is clearly hammer hail, I'm going to scope that roof and everything else for actual hail damage. The ironic part of this is that often the unscrupulous, and in this case, let me just be frank, stupid contractors will create fake damage on houses that actually already have legit damage. So what do I do in those cases? Well, if the contractor went over the roof with a golf shoe or quarters in the soles of his cougar paws or just straight up with a hammer, if there's real hail damage, the insurance company still owes for that hail damage no matter what else is going on that roof. But I'm gonna tell you right now that this is my green light to mess with that contractor. If I'm meeting the guy out there and I see both real hail damage and clear hammer hail, my first question is gonna be to this guy, innocently of course, it's your first time on this roof? 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer the guy gives me is, uh, no, this is my buddy's job, but he had to go home for the weekend, and uh, yeah, no, I've, I've never been on, this is my first time looking at it. It's also probably a complete lie. And no matter how the guy answers, I'll start asking really pointed questions and making lots of eye contact. So, uh, what do you think did this? I'll point to one of those spots. You know, the hail in this neighborhood was only about an inch and a half, and these marks are like orange-sized. How do you explain that, hmm? You know, I'm not sure what this is, but it really doesn't look like the hail damage I've been seeing in this neighborhood, or frankly, outside of your test square. I'm sorry, your friend's test square. So, why do you think that is? And then I'll take a lot of photos, and I'll say something like, yeah, I'm gonna have to have some other folks at the insurance company take a look at these photos and get their opinion on what they think caused this, and so on and so forth. And by this time, the guy is stammering and stuttering and sweating. I try to stand up above him on the slope because I want, I want him to sweat and I want him to have to look up at me into the sun to see me. And I'll be honest, I'm mad. It may seem cruel of me to twist a guy like this, but this is fraud, okay? You ever wonder why homeowner's insurance and auto insurance and other insurance is, is as expensive as it is? 
One of the big reasons is fraud. It costs you and me, and ironically, the dumbass who's doing this, since he's probably a homeowner and a car owner too, billions of dollars every single year in increased premiums. If there's already hail damage on this roof and I'm totaling it anyway, and the guy seems to be a little bit more misled than malicious, I'll often let him off the hook by saying, listen, dude, this isn't hail damage. There is actual hail damage on this roof and we're gonna pay for it. But if I ever see this kind of a spot again with you or associated with your company, I'll have to send it up the chain. Call me a softy, whatever. Fraud is a hard thing to prove and it requires resources. So, but I'm being truthful though. If I do see this again, all bets are off and SIU is gonna be on it. However, if there is no other damage and I'm seeing fake damage, I will definitely report it the first time without saying anything to the guy or the insured. If the insured asks, I'll just say, hey, I got everything I need, I'll be in touch. And then I call my manager as I'm getting into my truck for guidance from her on what I should do from this point because the carrier may end up paying for that roof anyway under a vandalism claim, SIU may get involved, et cetera. And at the minimum, because the carrier may want to go back out and look at that themselves to verify what they saw in my photos for themselves. So I'm not going to say anything like, well, I think you should file a vandalism claim like some people do. I wouldn't do that. And to you contractors who don't know what SIU is, it's the Carrier Special Investigations Unit and they love to catch contractors in fraud. Love it, it's one of their favorite things. I know some SIU people and they will chase you to the ends of the earth if they even think you might be up to no good. And once they catch you in the act, they'll come after you with not only their own team of attorneys, but the state commissioner, and in some cases, the FBI, if you're operating across state lines. They will mess you up, and if you're lucky enough to escape jail time, your business will be dismantled, and you'll probably never be able to get a business license or a job other than washing cars for the rest of your life. Is it worth it? Okay, notice that I didn't include any roofer theory science claims in this video. What's roofer theory? Roofer theory is the strenuous reaching for explanations of how this roof actually is damaged, but not by normal storm action. I'm gonna do another video on this topic later because it's a really fun one. I also didn't include astonishing overcharging. I've had several claims where I write something like a $5,500 estimate to replace an insurer's one-year-old 14 square roof. I start going over the totals with the insured and they start losing their mind on me. I just replaced that roof and it was $16,000. I'm like, did they do any other work to the house? No, we just had that roof done, so what kind of cheating SOB are you anyway, blah, 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 blah. So what do you do when something like that happens? Well, first, I don't say, hey, it looks like you've been cheated by your roofer. What I actually say is, okay, no problem, we can get to the bottom of this. Please get me three estimates from different local reputable contractors and let's see how they come in. I'll tell you right now, this is not gonna be an easy sell and this insured is still probably gonna be unhappy after I say something like this, but it's really the only option. And generally speaking, a week or two later, I'll get a very apologetic phone call from this poor insured with the news that he did get three estimates to do this work and they were all about five to $6,000. So to you adjusters out there, Write your claim as high as you can in accordance with the carrier's estimating guidelines and the policy, but no more. Write a good estimate and the vast majority of reputable and well-run restoration contractors will nod and smile when they see your bottom number. Question of the day. What other dirty tricks have you seen contractors pull? And contractors, let's be fair. Are there things that you see adjusters doing that you think are low down and dirty? Let's have a civil conversation in the comments where you're watching this video. I may be asking for trouble with that one, but we'll see. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, Thank you so much for watching the Property IA Show and have a great storm.